Hey peeps, what well, go on? Big up on yourself. People, um, I was just here doing my regular weekend cleanup on my little living space and um, I was thinking about a story that a squaddy of mine told me when I was in police training school. A, a story that never left my mind. It's a story about what goes around in this world comes around and, and uh, karma is something that is is real and karma for me is you know the way you treat people in life the same treatment will be dished out to you at some point in your life also that no matter how much power you think you have no in this life at one point at some time in in the future we will not have that power anymore whether it is taken from us by you know life itself as as life transpires or it will be taken from us through death because we all know we all have to die one day i don't think that this is something that we ever can't you know we ever even have to wonder about um before we get into the story we couldn't see my boy zeus zeus say hi to the people him <laughs> say hi so what well, go on people, big up on yourself. <laughs> yeah man, um, Zeus is my boy, I don't know. Um, yeah people, so I was cleaning up and that, and that story, I remember that story, I was thinking about it because I was thinking about how funny life can be, right? And how important it is for us to treat other people with respect. Um, it is important for us to have integrity be honest, be kind to each other, right? This story was shared with me. Huel, big up yourself. I don't even know if I'm still in other work, right? But I know if him watches this video, he can probably confirm the story and, and tell me if I, am le if I left out any details, right? Now, it, this story was shared with me more than 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago, people. But me just never forget the story. I also have a story about karma my own personal experience and more to share with my viewers, right? All right, so, my squad, we, we were in the same squad, squad two, big up squad two. <laughs> well, if I'm a squad, they're still there in another, another organization I serve, right? So, big up squad two. Um, all right, so this squad shared up with us, a group of us. I don't know how many of my squad remember this story. But he said that when he just left high school, he was wondering what he wanted to do with his life. I, as a young man, didn't, wasn't sure, I guess, what he wanted to do. Or at least he, I think he said that he had done the police test, but he was awaiting um, a call from, from the police service. Right? But in the meantime, he wanted to provide for his family. And so he became a taxi operator. While he was a taxi operator, there was this police officer in the community who used to harass him every single day. Every single day the man see him, he stop him, and if he not give him a ticket, he might ask him for a drink, right? He might find all kind of things for, for, um, for harass the man about. He said this police officer harassed him so much that he had to put down the taxi business. He just said, no man, I can't deal with this because if I follow this money, I can't make no money on the road. Right? That's how difficult this police officer was. And, and I'm sure that you have a whole heap of police officer out there in Jamaica and everywhere in the world who kind of abuse them power that way, right? So you all say, boy, this man are targeting so much that him, him, him just have to put on the taxi business. Him realized that him couldn't survive because of this police officer. No, as fate would have it, the police service, the police, um, the ICF at the time, because we all we were all a member of the Island Special Constabulary Force. Hewell was called, and of course, all of us went into training police training he will became a police officer and i remember you will was saying to us you see this 
You see this policeman here, always harass me, look at this now, I am now a police officer. But not only that, that same police officer ended up losing the work. I don't know for whatever reason, maybe for some unscrupulous activities. And guess what this, what this police officer end up doing? This police officer end up becoming a taxi operator. <laughs> Can you imagine? Eh? Same old police officer became a taxi operator while Huel became a police officer. Now, I, 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 if I remember, if I remember correctly, Huel was assigned to the area where we, where he was from. Now, Huel did not update us on as to whether he had interacted with this this ex-police officer who used to harass him. But Huel is a youth with a clean heart, and I'm sure. Of course, if if he encounter this police officer, this ex-police officer running taxi, and he's not breaking the law, I'm sure you all would not be harassing him, right? And uh, you know, I, I believe in my squaddies. I have a lot of good squaddies who carry out them job with, with integrity. I've worked with a few of them. But for me, it 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 it's a story that I never forget because I'm I always say you have to be careful how you treat people because the tables can turn, right? I'm sure many of you perhaps have experienced things like that in our own life. All right, now my, another story, and, and this is one that is personal. I remember when I worked as IT director and I used to drive company vehicle. Right there in Otrius one day, um, another vehicle was overtaking me on the road. And he came in too close, right, and squeezed the, the right side, the right front side of my vehicle. An off-duty sergeant who was passing saw, the city, saw what was happening and saw me talking to the man and everything like that. And he came over. Now, I don't know if he knew the man from before. But when he came over, he looked at me and he said, are you wrong enough? And I said, officer, oh, me for wrong. And the man, the man come in too close to me. Anyway, he said to me, he said, I'm going to call another police from the Otrius police station to come to the scene. A corporal come there. I, no, I think he was a, a, a constable. No? I don't remember if he was a corporal yet. Anyway, this police officer came to the scene now and the sergeant, the off-duty sergeant tell him everything and say, boy, I'm me wrong. It's point to me and I say, are the Indian wrong now? Now, both the sergeant and this constable, right, said to me, said, me need to fix the man's car if me no want go court. Then write me a ticket. And, uh, of course, it looked like they told them, I don't know if the sergeant know, know the man or, if, uh, you know, or they told them know him. But I say, you know what, I don't want no trouble. So I ask the man, I say, all right, how much, how much for fix your vehicle? How much you think will fix the vehicle? He must say to me, say, boy, I don't think they'll cost them more than $6,000. No, this is more than 10 years ago. Now. This is probably about 13 or 14 years ago. So me you now decides, all right, you know what, I don't want no trouble. I just want to forget about this. Um, and I accompany the vehicle, me I drive. So I go to the ABM machine. When we reached the ABA machine, people went, a long line went there, and I have to wait. While me in the line, I wait. Now the police called me, the constable called me from, uh, I, tell, I asked me, where the man money there? Where me there with the money? And I said, oh, what is this man? And I said, then, how them the bomb is? And I said, I carry the, I said, I carry the money coming, they're the machine, me, you know? Anyway, I go get the money, and I hand it to the man. I handed the money to the man. People, about two weeks after, I remember I was, at, I was at this little function with my family. And I saw this policeman. He was not on duty. But he said to me, say, hey, you know, so you need to give the taxi man more money because it costs more money than that to fix the vehicle. So you need to, fix, you need to give him. The man, the man I say you need to give him more money. So I said to the police officer, I said, hold on, I start, you know, I try to start me. I said, I said, I don't think it's ethical for you. I tell me, I said, I need to give the, the man more money. The man, we settled it. 
I gave the man the $6,000 and we settled it, right? Me done with this, I'm a walk away, right? Me say, I, I was upset because me I said, well, this police harass me before my family about giving this, this other man more money, like, you know, him I get a thing off of it. Me no know. But people, of course, a few years after, I ended up joining the police service. And as you guys all know, I was promoted very quickly because of my dedication and hard work, people. Within one year and a few months, I was promoted to corporal, right? The same police officer, I later learned that he was a corporal. Now, I don't remember if he was a corporal at the time, but not only that, I had interactions with the same police officer when I became a sergeant. No, I was a senior. I was his superior. I became a sergeant. And people, I've always said that when I went to this police station and I saw this man, he couldn't look me in my in face. It's somebody that I've always said I would never ever want to work with because I do not believe this man was a man of integrity or honesty. You know, it's just so funny how you know, the tables turn and here it is that I was also a police officer now. And I was all, I, I became his, his, his senior. I became his senior in rank, you know. And it, there was a lesson to be learned when I look back on this. I'm like, you know, that is why it is so important to act with respect, integrity, and, 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 and with, with impartiality and Make sure that when you carry out your duty, right, you can look back on it and say, boy, if anybody scrutinize this thing, I me know so me do the right thing. I do not believe that this police officer could have looked upon himself and said he did the right thing, right? But I'm sure there are so many instances where many of us have been in situations where when we look back on our lives and look on, on, on some of these things, we happen. We can say, boy, you know, karma is real, right? No, I wish nothing bad for, the, for, for this police officer when I was in the JCF. I, you know, I respected him as a colleague, you know, in, in that, you know, I respect all police officers, but I did not respect the, his action at the time. And I, I felt like I judged him for that action, even when I was a sergeant, that if I was going on an operation and he was a part of it i would have opted not to work with him because i did not trust him i did not believe that he had good judgment no of course everybody deserve a break right i i think he probably still is still serving in the in the jcf and i think if he sees this video he will remember the incident I don't know if he, if he will remember it differently from I, you know, because I was on the receiving end. So I probably receive, um, remember it a little bit differently, right? But people, um, just wanted to share that story with you because while I was here working, um, cleaning up, you know, I was here thinking and, and even thinking about my time in the JCF. And from time to time, I will think about, you know, some little things um, in the JCF, some little stories, and I just decided to share this one with you guys. People, um, this is all I have to share with you today. Look out for my next video. I'll be doing another true crime story um, three days from now. I'll release it on Monday or Tuesday, guys. So look out for that. Until next time, my beautiful people, remember, subscribe, click on the notification um, button. What good. All right? Yeah, man. Big up.